We're going to cover some of the terms like DPF and DEF that you've probably heard in relation to your newer diesel-powered truck, but may not be really clear on exactly what they mean and what it may mean for you and your truck. In this presentation, we'll go over the two most egregious engine emissions that the EPA decided to control and minimize, and what car manufacturers did to comply. Hi, I'm Ernie with InsaneDiesel.com, and we're going to discuss those two bad boys that come out your tailpipe that are drawing so much attention from the EPA. And the first of those is nitrous oxides. Uh, there's NO and NO2. Nitrous oxide gases are formed in the combustion chamber, and the hotter the combustion in the engine, the more nitrous oxides that are created. The second is DPM, or diesel particulate matter. And that's the black smoke you see coming out the tailpipe when you step on the gas really hard and uh, you look behind you and, uh, and then you see all that black smoke. It's uh, soot, or in other words, partially burned fuel. And no one likes breathing those either, right? So uh, unfortunately, those two uh, kind of uh, are formed under the opposite conditions. So we can't get rid of one without creating a larger amount of the other one. High uh, efficiency and high temperature combustion creates nitrous oxides and cooler combustion and less efficient combustion creates DPM or soot. So let's go on and uh, to the EGR and how the uh, EPA decided to use that in order to uh, try to limit the number of nitrous oxides coming out the tailpipe. And it does that by taking some of the exhaust uh, that normally would all go out the engine and recirculating it back into the intake through the, an EGR valve. That EGR valve determines how much goes on there based on driving and engine conditions. And, but the amount can be 30 to 50%. And the, the nice thing is, is that it reduces nitrous oxides. The downside is, is that's replacing nice fresh air fuel mixture coming into the engine and results in a less efficient, uh, however cooler, but less efficient combustion process. And that means you're gonna lose gas mileage and power. Also, uh, even though we're dropping nitrous oxides, having a less efficient combustion means more fuel goes out unburned and that is DPM or soot. And when that soot uh, comes back in through the exhaust, it coats kind of the, the uh, intake and the inside of the combustion chamber and blows by or washes by and ends up in your oil. And that's how soot, uh, or more soot than usual, ends up in the oil of a diesel engine. And that soot is abrasive and can cause damage or premature wear to the bearings and the other surfaces that the oil is supposed to protect and lubricate. Okay, now that we've dealt with the nitrous oxides coming out the exhaust pipe by cooling the combustion in the combustion chamber, uh, the EPA decided that it next wanted to address the DPM, or the diesel particulate matter, soot and smoke, that comes out the tailpipe. Especially since a little bit more is created with by inefficient process with the EGR valve. And so, we come to our next set of acronyms, the DPF, and the DPF is the diesel particulate filter. And it kind of looks like a muffler, it's about the same size and shape, but it's a very fine filter. And that uh, soot and exhaust smoke that's coming out of the engine is caught in a screen that filters down to one micron, so very fine. And that works really good for a short while. At some point, however, the gooky soot starts plugging up the DPF, and that causes a little back pressure to the engine and causes it to run a little efficiency, and that triggers the computer to go into regen mode, or regeneration. And for regeneration, we gotta bring that DPF up to about 1100 degrees, about 600 degrees Celsius. And to do that, uh, one thing the car manufacturers came up with was to dump fuel into the combustion chamber, but after the, the normal combustion had already taken place. So it wasn't fuel that went actually into providing more power for the engine, it was fuel simply uh, meant to provide heat and bring this DPF up to that temperature necessary to uh, burn off the rest of that diesel particulate matter and have a cleaner exhaust. Now the problem with uh, regen mode is, is it requires high RPMs and that works good if you're going down the highway, but if you're just driving around town and the regen mode kicks in, uh, through stopping and starting, it may not be able to complete the regen process. And that becomes problematic if that happens a lot uh, because it starts to plug this up and it doesn't get uh, burned out. And again, that provides uh, back pressure to the engine, makes the combustion less efficient, makes, uh, drops power and gas mileage. And plus that fuel that's being dumped in there doesn't go to moving the car forward anyways. It, it just goes to creating heat and that can really drop your gas mileage down. But the problem comes 
when this is not completely cleaned out uh, several times when it wants to be or needs to be and it becomes plugged and at that point the engine uh, performance really gets uh, shut down and the options are to take it off and get it cleaned which is very expensive or to replace it which is even more expensive it's like a, upwards of eight thousand dollars sometimes to replace these things in these uh, devices we're using uh, precious metals such as palladium and platinum so they can become quite expensive all right and so again very often uh, this uh, soot uh, causes a back pressure and that causes the exhaust gases to not be fully purged from the combustion chamber and that soot is then again ending up in your oil and it's becoming quite a serious issue that with the amount of soot that is end up ending up in the oil and one of the issues is of course the soot is an abrasive and it's damaging to the engine bearings and to the uh, camshaft and the lifters and so forth but also that uh, the uh, oil ports and the oil orifices that feed the the bearings are in the newer engines quite small and that soot can plug those up also, some of that fuel that's being dumped in there after the combustion, initial combustion has taken place is also being partially burned and creating more soot in there, adding soot to the soot that's in the oil. And some of that fuel is actually not being burned at all and is washing away the oil film that protects and lubricates the piston when it's going up and down in the cylinder and it's causing premature wear in the cylinder walls. And then that oil or that fuel continues to end up in the oil and it gets into the bearings and replaces the oil that should be lubricating the bearings. And what we're finding is that it is causing catastrophic uh, engine failure by destroying the bearings. So it's very important that this stay in as good condition as possible. And we're also gonna show you another way that we can radic radically reduce the damage that uh, potentially can happen from the use of the DPF. The goal to reduce diesel particulate material coming out the tailpipe has been met but it comes at sometimes at quite a significant cost to your engine. All right, now we've got the EGR dropping nitrous oxides and we've got the DPF dropping DPM or soot that comes out the tailpipe. However, remember that the DPM or the DPF, diesel particulate filter, needs some very high temperatures to bring that soot level down. And remember, high temperatures create nitrous oxides. So the EPA decided then in 2010 that it was time to uh, work on those nitrous oxides again. And the, uh, the levels uh, for nitrous oxides uh, were, were lowered and the car manufacturers had to come up with a way to make that happen. And here's what they came up with. It's called, uh, as you can see, our next ac uh, acronym is the SCR, Selective Catalytic Reduction. And so that is a, uh, another muffler shaped device that's put into the exhaust system and it works in conjunction with DEF which is diesel exhaust fluid and so how that works is is uh, DEF diesel exhaust fluid is basically ammonia that's going to be your chemically expressed NH3 and this also is computer controlled and it what it does is it sends that DPF down a line and injects it into the SCR, the Selective Catalytic Reducer. And the, the NH3, the ammonia, combines with the NOx from the engine, NOx, and out the tailpipe comes some nice harmless water and nitrogen. Those are things we normally breathe in the air and everybody's happy when that happens, right? So now the D DEF is probably, you may have noticed, it's a little blue cap, usually in the uh, fuel filler door, and you buy it in boxes, so well, actually gallon containers that are in boxes, and it's essential that you keep that DEF fluid up past a certain level. When it starts getting low, it'll put a little warning light on your dash. And if you continue to drive uh, and that runs out, then the computer will put the engine into limp mode and you'll only be able to go about five miles per hour. And then if you turn it off, it's sometimes it won't even restart until you fill that fluid back up. Now another issue we're finding with that fluid is uh, it can be contaminated or uh, if it sits for a couple of months, it can crystallize and 
then it won't uh, be able to be injected and the truck won't start. And it doesn't look like there's any reason for that to happen because there's our, there is fluid in there. Also, the, uh, it, what we're finding is in really cold weather, that fluid, VEF fluid, is also crystallizing at, and, and plugging the injector in the SCR itself. And so in the middle of winter, car, truck won't run or it's in limp mode and the DEF is up and you're wondering what's going on and that we're finding that's sometimes the case. But overall, that's a relatively minor thing and the use of the DEF and the SCR has actually turned out to be a really good thing because what we can do is not rely so much on the EGR to control nitrous oxides because it's being controlled afterwards and that means that we can take the temperature and the efficiency of the combustion chamber uh, and the combustion process and bring it back up. So we can run that engine the way it was intended to be run. And we get our power back, we're getting our gas mileage back because we're not dealing so much with the nitrous oxides in the combustion chamber, but we make as many as we want to, so the engine can run the way it wants to. And then we're taking them out with the SCR and the DEF, and that's kind of a good thing. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of how emissions are controlled in the modern diesel engine and how it affects you as the owner of such an awesome vehicle. You've also seen how cleaning up emissions can come at a significant cost to you and your engine. InsaneDiesel.com would like to recommend some absolutely essential things to do if you want to protect your engine from the detrimental effects of EGR, DPF, regen mode, and just regular combustion. The first thing you want to do is get a bypass filter. Your stock filter needs to pass oil at a high volume and high pressure through to the moving parts of your engine. Unfortunately, that means it cannot find filter out contaminants and abrasives like soot. As a result, your engine gets dirtier and dirtier as you drive, prematurely wearing out your engine. A bypass filter is the only way to get that damaging soot out of your oil, and One World filter is the best. It filters down to one micron, more than 10 times more effective than your stock filter. That means you will actually be driving around with constantly clean oil, and that can radically increase the life of your engine. One World filter also has a capacity 400 times greater than your stock filter. That means you can go up to a year or 20,000 miles with clean oil before a change is needed. This is a real game changer. No other filter is better. One World Filter has been shown in many cases to keep your oil technically cleaner than new oil. It's that amazing. Next is One World Fuel Treatment. This fuel additive facilitates a more consistent and efficient combustion. It also has an upper cylinder lubricating quality to help protect piston cylinder walls. A more efficient combustion means better gas mileage and less soot, potentially reducing regen mode in the DPF by up to 75% or more, saving costly repairs or replacement of the DPF jumping gas mileage by up to 10% or more. Last, but certainly not least, One World Engine Treatment is technically a metal modifier and utilizes an X1R proprietary tungsten disulfide formula that nanobonds with the metal surfaces in your engine. It actually impregnates the metal, creating a super hardened surface that is also highly lubricating. That can protect your cylinder walls from wear due to DPF, regen mode, as well as the bearings when soot and raw fuel get into your oil. It repairs some friction damage and protects your engine from cold starts. It can increase engine life by up to 47%. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you found that it was a worthwhile investment of your time.